What's up guys, Shane here again today. I wanted to bring you a video today talking about uh, probably one of my favorite modes in any card game in a long time, and it's uh, Singleton. So we've had three gauntlets be Singleton gauntlets, and Singleton, if you're new to this game, is essentially you can only run copies of one of each card instead of the normal three of each card. So in Singleton, it's... Uh, you know, 40 different cards. So it's all about trying to maximize consistency in an otherwise inconsistent deck. And um, it's just one of my favorite modes. Absolutely. I've wrote uh, two articles about 10 different decks uh, that I brewed up for for the gauntlet. Um, and I wrote those on RenteroCCG.com. So make sure to check those out if you guys are interested. But it's one of my favorite modes. And this is my third gauntlet. I just got off finishing it today and uh, got my third Prime Glory from three different singleton gauntlets, which felt great, and I actually used the same exact date deck with just moderate tweaks in between, uh, and it's it was just a blast. I, I love singleton, so I want to take you through a little bit of the deck, uh, basic strategy going into deck creation for singleton and things that I saw a lot of this time around and everything, and I really hope singleton is a gauntlet format for the next seasonal tournament as well because it's just so much fun. It's such a nice break from ladder. You know, you, you're grinding out ladder trying to get your rank high, but it can be a little bit tilting at times, so singleton is so refreshing to just jump into and, and try out. So I really hope Gauntlet's going forward or Singleton and the, the band format. I think those are the two best for Gauntlet. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So let me jump into this uh, video here. Make sure to like and subscribe and do all those good things for us. Comment below, help the algorithm get our video out there. So that'd be much appreciated. So as you can see, just finished this. So I got five Prime Glory. So now I have a chance at the last chance Gauntlet if I don't make top 700 in Masters. So that's a little bit about the seasonal tournament. If you're unfamiliar with that, I think we have a couple videos describing a little bit about what's going on there. And also on our podcast, we talk about it plenty. Um, but uh, for this is under Gauntlet, obviously. So for this deck, we'll go back to collection. We talk about um, the Singleton deck here. So we'll edit this deck right here. All right. So really the whole point of this deck is a uh, strong mid-range deck with... Um, lots of just, you know, utility and lots of search engine, uh, tutoring cards, lots of consistency, consistency tried to be, you know, jam packed into the deck, even though we can't really guarantee a certain curve, but we just want to get certain staples guaranteed when we're hitting certain turns that we really want to be seeing, okay, a unit that has X power here and a draw card here and X and X, and then enough combat tricks to get us by. So I think the three strongest mid-range regions or three of the strongest that have a lot of consistency are Bilge, Freljord, and Noxus. I think they have a lot of good stuff going for it. So I'll go through the deck a little bit. And again, I made slight tweaks over the three different uh, gauntlets uh, as things got nerfed and buffed and in between because this has been over a month or so. But the, the heart of the deck's there. Probably only five cards have changed overall. And, you know, you'd have to go back to the original article to see exactly what the original one was. But where I'm at now is for one drops, we have Crackdrop, Corsair, uh, Codger, Draven's Biggest Fan, Jagged Butcher, Legion, Saboteur, Omen Hawk. And I'm not going to go through spells yet. I'm just going to go through units. For units, we have, uh, for two drops, we have Sentry, Box the Puss, Deck Hand, Fortune Croaker, Hired Gun, Legion Grenadier. For three drops, we just have uh, Trapper, Draven, uh, Kindly Tavern Keeper, Petty Officer, and that's it. For fours, we got Babbling Berg, Twisted Fate, and the Zap uh, Sprayfin. For fives, we have Everest and Hearthguard, Gangplank, Swain, Trundle. Sixes, we just have Sejuani. Seven, we have Ancient Yeti, but Ancient Yeti kind of counts as a, a weird drop because he comes out earlier most of the time. And then eights, we finish it off with Farron, Leviathan, and then a one nine drop at the Dreadway. So as you can tell, there's a lot of decent units that have uh, pretty solid at damage output, including the Crackshot Corsair and the Legion Saboteur. But then the main point that you should notice here is really the consistency uh, of drawing certain cards, particular things like uh, Draven's Biggest Fan is a huge card because if you see him early, obviously you get Draven now on three, so that can guarantee a three drop, which is very, very solid. Uh, he was definitely a sh one of the shining cards of the deck. You can also see things like the Avarice and Sentry, just to make sure you're going to get to draw a card, as well as the Fortune Croaker as well. We just want to draw a card here. And again, I'm just going through units. Uh, the Trapper is really solid because it might slow down what you're drawing in a normal deck and it might kind of throw off the curve, but this card still seems a lot of play even still. But in this, we don't need an exact curve. We just need strong bodies. So a 1-5-5, uh, you know, a Yeti is, is massive body. So Trapper is really good for this style of thing. Petty Officer is just two units, which is good. Babbling Berg, like I said, is, we're talking about the consistency of drawing a five cost or more unit. That's very important because the ones we have are uh, the Hearthguard, Gangplank, Sejuani, Yeti, Farin, or the Leviathan. So they're all very solid units, and they typically start at turn five or six. So on four, you're, you're probably going to find a really important drop coming up soon. 
Going further with Draw, the most versatile card in the game is Twisted Fate. Clearly, he has the three different cards he can use for just board wipe if they're rushing you, a solid stun if you really need to get something uh, stunned, or just card draw again if you need to. Zap Spray Fan, another unit that draws a card, very important, and so on. Uh, and, you know, really, that's pretty much the, the consistency value of these cards that are generating cards. All these units are generating another card in your hand, which is extremely important in a mode where you don't have that consistency. And then when you go down from there, you know, you just want to fill in some solid drops. Trundle's a really solid drop, just even still after the nerf, just because the Ice Pillar's a free 8-cost unit, just another unit on the board that gives you some uh, lots of versatile options, both offensively and defensively, which is really good. Obviously, we have a lot of ways to damage the Nexus with a few different cards which I've gone over, which so Gangplank and Sedrani are clear autos. Ancient Yeti's amazing in this mode, because if you do see him, you just get to drop him early and deal a bunch of damage. Um, Captain Farron is probably the, one of my favorite cards in the game. He's just such a consistent 8-drop. He's an 8-8 with Overwhelm, which is massive, but then on top of that, you get 3 Decimates, so it really puts your opponent on a clock, and there's not that much healing when you only can run 1-ofs instead of uh, 3x cards. So Captain Farron's massive, and then ending that with Leviathan and Dreadway. And obviously, these two are giant finishers. You know, Leviathan has Overwhelm, but also... The addition of both Draw Gangplank and Draw Swain is huge. So there are so many units that are drawing another unit, which is massively important for Singleton. But uh, it just keeps your hand so fresh. You never run out of a hand, which is incredible. But for Leviathan, obviously just three more Nexus damage. And Dreadway, when we run as many Overwhelm units as we do and spells that deal damage, Dreadway is massively important. So going through some of the spells... You want some combat tricks sprinkled in, um, and then you really want, um, you know, a couple late game things that can help, but may mostly just some early combat tricks. So I have, because again, this is our mid-range deck. We're going to be battling in the mid-range. We're going to be having units swinging at each other consistently, and we just want that to make sure uh, that that goes as favorable as possible. So Bright Steel is, or Brittle Steel is really solid, just one cost combat trick. We have Entreat, again, and then the other version of what I'm saying is adding even another layer of consistency for card draw. So even though Entreat is a two-cost draw, and we don't know what it's going to get us, because it could get us anything from Draven all the way up to Sejuani, even though we don't know what it's going to get us, it's still super solid, and we'll guarantee a unit. And that unit will be a champion, which will be extremely beneficial to any of our game plans, because they all are super useful champions. Um... On top of that, we move down, we have Shared Spoils, which is the same kind of reason as Entreat, just buff our deck a little bit and get a card draw. Troll Chant, probably one of the best combat tricks in the game for two mana. At three, we have both Calling Strike and Death's Hand. These are kind of interesting. Calling Strike's 100%, uh, I think that's needed. We don't have a ton of Frostbite, but we have enough where you can get use out of it with that, but Troll Chant can get use, or just killing a Weirding Stones or something early is really important. And then Death's Hand is a nice damage ping to the Nexus if we're really trying to level up Gangplank or Sejuani, but it's also just solid uh, removal. Scorch Earth is a very, very solid card because uh, a lot of people are playing Howling Abyss in this mode where they generate random leveled up champions. So Scorch Earth is super solid to get rid of that or just killing a damaged unit. Whirling Death is massively important for clearing out, uh, you know, it's a combat trick, like a single combat uh, to a degree, but it's also really important for wind condition because when we have Overwhelm units, we Whirling Death in front of the, the blocker, in front of the Overwhelm unit, we get to deal excess damage through. Super important there. Uh, Avalanche, just early board clear. There was a lot of, um, in, in the earlier Singleton Gauntlets, I saw a lot of aggro. And uh, Avalanche was massively helpful then. This most recent Singleton Gauntlet, which we'll talk about in a second, I didn't see much aggro. Uh, Fury of the North, again, it got nerfed at one point. It's now a 3-4, but instead of a 4-4 buff. But still very solid, super solid combat trick. It won me two games today, actually, just by pushing a little, uh, through a little bit extra damage. At the top end, we don't really run much spells at all. We have Harsh Winds, which is just a fantastic combat trick, both offensively or defensively. You can get two extremely favorable trades, or you can just stop lethal for a turn. And then we have Ice Quake, which is just, again, more for that, okay, am I getting rushed by scout-style decks? I just need to wipe the board. Um, today, in this uh, gauntlet, it was mostly ramp decks. I saw one or two mid-range decks, and then the rest were ramp, and I saw zero aggro decks. And I think I lost one or two games along the way, so it was I played like nine or so games. And, um, yeah, if I had to make any changes, I would take out, uh, for, for the current meta, at least I would take out Avalanche and Icequake because there's no need for these unless we're seeing a lot of those other small, shorter mid-range decks or aggro decks. We can really compete with some of our Frost against some of the mid-range stuff. I would definitely take out those two if it's going to be a ramp meta, 100%. They, they both need to go. We aren't stalling enough to actually include Howling Abyss ourselves because we're actually trying to push the damage quickly. And I lost one or two games to ramp today. 
So any changes I would make would probably be some of the, uh, maybe, obviously, like I said, those two cards definitely come out. I think possibly fitting in uh, Trindamir over maybe Swain or maybe even Trundle or even TF would be really solid because that helps that matchup a lot. It stops them just being able to vengeance one of my units or just crumble one of my units. So I would say something along those lines. And then maybe a couple thicker bodies early on. Uh, we probably don't need the deck hand anymore. The deck hand was in here originally when we had Make It Rain, and now there are not enough spells for this to actually matter. We obviously have a couple skills where it could matter with Legion Saboteur and Gangplank and things like that, but for the most part, deck hand's not super needed. He's still actually solid just to throw out a keg and then your opponent normally drags it out. You save some damage just because it's early and they don't want to take it. But I would probably drop that. Avalanche, Icequake would be the first three cards I would drop. And then I would add some slight anti, uh, whatchamacallit, anti-ramp uh, cards. I would maybe even add like a Noxian Guillotine just to get a few different picks off of certain units because that was very rough uh, when I, I would poke different big units but they wouldn't actually die uh, and things like that. One card that really shut me down today was uh, Infinite Mind Splitter. Shut me down in two different games. Um, so that card's super strong. A, a nice way to be able to get that off would probably be, like I said, the Noxian Guillotine because I got to poke it plenty of times but wasn't able to uh, kill it any other way. So maybe that is a solid addition. And uh, from there, maybe some other anti-ramp cards. You know, the late game felt good. Like I said, Trindamir could be used uh, as an addition, but we don't, we could even add Feel the Rush as like a super late game. Like, all right, well, we kind of missed what we want and now drop this, but not my favorite idea. I think we have enough tech for certain things. Uh, there's plenty of other cards that we could add, like Riptide Rex got nerfed recently, but he's a super solid addition to a mid-range deck like this, and he was in a version before. So is Battle Fury as a surprise 8 damage. That would probably go in over um, Ice Quake almost directly as a switch out, just because we have enough units with Overwhelm that that can surprise 8 damage pretty early. Uh, so I think that's a 100% something I would consider adding. Um, yeah, and then I'm not really sure. I th we definitely would keep Harsh Winds. That card's super solid. We maybe even add a, uh, a Trifarian Assessor just for a little bit more card draw, but we had, uh, we did have a lot and it felt good. One possible other thing we could actually add would be Decisive Maneuver since we do have a lot of Overwhelm that this card saw a lot of play recently and I did a deck breakdown for a Freljord, uh, Darius and Draven deck that's using a lot of Overwhelm units. And it was super, super useful. So I would probably slot in if I was being honest. And, you know, we'll make the changes now as we're going through the video. Uh, currently, since it is more, uh, whatchamacallit, more ramp oriented, we will make those changes. So we'll drop the deck hand, the ice quake, and the avalanche as well. And like I said, we will go back and we will add, like I said, a um, battle fury for sure would come in. Uh, definitely super solid card. I don't think we need the Trifarian Assessor, so we'll go Decisive Maneuver. And then probably just even a straight-up Decimate actually in the deck would be really useful, just to push that little bit of damage through at the end. And then the last change I would make would be possibly trying to take out one of these champions to fit in Trindamir. But I'm not going to make that at the moment, because that would have to take some thinking. I think the only champion we really have the ability to remove here would be uh, Twisted Fate, just because the other ones are extremely important, or, or Trundle, technically. But both of those don't feel super great because they do have a lot of versatility for Trindamir. So this is where I probably would take the deck now. And I'll throw this code in with the adjusted uh, adjustments. Uh, throw the deck code in the comments and both the description below as well. Because this is where I think is the best option for us to counter ramp successfully. So uh, that's what you're going to see in Singleton. At least that's what I saw. I think I saw it about 7 out of the 9 games. So good luck in the gauntlet, guys. I hope it works out for you. Let me switch back to my video here. But... That's the gauntlet. I hope it uh, stays as a mode. I think it has a really, really nice niche market that it just really fits. It's a really refreshing game mode to play. I feel reinvigorated after grinding and it not going so well. So I hope you, uh, you know, like the content. I hope you like, subscribe to the video, um, you know, leave a comment, tell us what else you want to see. And uh, if you jump into the gauntlet and you play this deck, let me know how it goes. I'll also link the two articles I wrote with uh, nine other decks, including this one uh, on RenteraCCG.com. So they will have 10 different decks you can pick from to try to take into the uh, gauntlet yourself and see how it goes. Thanks, guys. Until next time.